Just to reiterate, this is what our game should look like at the moment. Uh, we've got the scrolling background, the islands move around, the plane uh, that moves very slowly backwards. You probably could increase that speed a little bit more. Um, it's just if you put it to two, it does look like the plane stands still. And spacebar will shoot. And if you hold down space, it won't just shoot a constant stream because we set that timer up. So let's go and create some enemies. What we're going to do is we're going to set up some sounds to start with. So this is um, part four of the tutorial that you're working through with enemy combat features. And we're going to create a few sound effects, create some explosions, um, and set up an enemy plane. So sound effects is this button here, create a sound. And we'll want to open a sound. And the sound that I'll want to open is in my resources folder. Uh, where is it gone? Scrolling shooter, scrolling shooter, resources, sound explosion, one. And I don't think you'll get all these settings. Um, so I'm just going to click OK and leave it at the default. And give it a name sound, explosion, one. Now I tend to separate everything with underscores. Um, it is the, the more accepted way to do it. The other way to do it is to type the first word or lowercase and then the rest of the words starting with an uppercase. Uh, I find that harder to read and generally more acceptable practice is to separate every word with an underscore when naming your variables. Not with a space, Game Maker will allow it, but it's not good practice to do so. And um, when you start doing written code at higher levels, uh, it will just give you errors. So get used to it now. Underscores is the little, um, it's next to the zero. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on the keyboard at the top, then zero, then the minus sign. And if you push shift and the minus sign, it will push that underscore. All right, so that's my first sound. Let's make the other sounds as well. SN, SND explosion two, load that sound and click OK. You can click the play button to test it, but then click the stop button because it will just loop forever. SND explosion underscore three. And click that one there. I may as well import all the sounds while I'm here. SND new life. Load that and get, get new life. And click OK. And then SND warning. And get the warning sound. All right, so I've imported all those sounds. Um, I want to create some more sprites here. SPR explosion. I'm going to load a sprite. The sprite I'm going to load is the explosion. And which one do I want to use? Uh, the smaller one, I think. I want to use the bigger one for my main character. Click open, and that's it there. Cool. Um, I will need to make sure that I go and click the center button here, or otherwise when the explosion occurs and I instantiate that explosion at the position of the plane that explodes, it's gonna be off center. So I'll make sure that that is centered there, and click OK. So I've got this happening now. I'm gonna create an object that goes along with that explosion. So object explosion, set it to the sprite. And I'm just gonna add a very simple event here. I want the explosion to play once and then disappear. So other um, animation end, this is the event animation end. When the animation ends, it's gonna destroy itself. That's all that I really need for that bit of code. So now what I need to do is Just have to actually check very quickly. I'm pretty sure we did part three scrolling background, part uh, sorry, part one scrolling backgrounds, part two player character, part three shooting, part four enemy combat features. Okay, so we haven't actually made the plane yet. Um, and that looks like it's on the next one. 
enemy com- oh there we go enemy combat yeah never mind um all right so enemy combat features is the 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 one that i'm working through here So if you're following along with that tutorial as well, second half of that first page, fighting an enemy quickly becomes boring if they don't fight back. So we're going to make some bullets or enemy bullets for them to work with. So first of all, SPR, enemy bullet. It is absolutely fine to name these things with long file names. Okay, in fact, it's better. If I just go, okay, all right, I'm going to be efficient here and go SPR underscore EB for enemy bullet. I'm not going to remember what EB means by the end of uh, tomorrow. Okay, so enemy bullet takes a little bit longer to type, but it's going to mean in the long run, it's a lot easier. Load sprite, and I'm going to load the enemy bullet, which is this one here. Center that and click OK. So I've got that there and create an object for that bullet. So object enemy bullet. And we're going to add an event. So we're going to add the create event. And the create event, the action we're going to do with this is set the vertical speed. Now, there's actually two ways to do this in Game Maker. You can go move fixed at speed 6 on down. That would work. Or you could also set the vertical speed to 6. Okay, with vertical speed, positive number is going down. Negative number is going up. So there's two ways to do that. Oh, there is a third way as well, which is move free, but that's the same as move fixed, except you've got to type an angle in, which we don't want to do. So we're going to set the vertical speed to six going down. If this bullet ever leaves the room, so event other outside room, we're going to destroy itself. And that'll stop the computer's memory getting clogged up with a whole lot of objects uh, that it, we can't interact with. And then we're going to add a, an event collision with my plane. And the collision with my plane is going to play a sound. Explosion 3. We want to make sure loop is set to false. It only plays it once. Destroy self. So it destroys the bullet. And then set health. If we look at this here. Um, where's set health? It's down here in score. This one here is set health. Set health to negative five relative. Now, by default, this health value is built into Game Maker. Um, it's 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 probably not the best way to do things when you have a lot of objects that you want to keep track of the health of, because this is just a global value, and only allows you to track the health of one object. In this case, it's going to refer to our plane. Um, we could make it refer to anything. Uh, because it does refer to anything, it's just this global value called health, but we're going to, for the purposes of this game, make it refer to our player health. So it starts at 100, it always starts at 100 whenever the game starts, and we're going to make it relative to whatever its current value is. So if it's 100, it's going to be negative 5 relative to 100, which means it will be 95. If, we, if it's at 50, it's then going to be 45. This relative button will either add or subtract to the current value. So we do that there, and that's fine. Now we're gonna create a different enemy bullet. So this is enemy bullet one, click OK. And we're gonna create a different enemy bullet. Um, create an object, E, oops. OBJ, enemy, bullet, and I'm going to call this homing. So that's what this one does. Enemy, bullet, homing. I'll just rename the other one just to enemy, bullet. Okay, so this is a, um, it's not really a homing one, but that's probably the best description I can come up with now. It's going to move towards our plane when it gets created. So we're going to add an event, create. We're going to test to see if an object exists first, because what could happen, right, is we might be playing the game and the plane gets destroyed, but then one of these enemies tries to shoot a bullet at our plane. And if the plane's not there, it's going to give us an error because the game's going to say, where's the plane? I don't know where the plane is. Uh, I can't shoot a bullet at it. So what we need to do is check if an object exists. 
and I think it might be this one. Nope, it's not that one. Uh, oh, here we go, test instance count, that's the one. So this one here, just, and we want to test the plane, and we could just say larger than zero. Okay, so if there's more than zero planes, in other words, if there's one plane, there should never be two planes, but um, there might be if there was a power up that gave you double planes or something that could work. So if there's more than zero planes, then it will do the rest of this stuff. And we're going to put in a code block here. So we're going to put a code block in so that it does a few different things here. We're going to, it's always best to use these code blocks. It makes it more readable, even if you've only got one command. So we're going to make it move towards an object. Move towards an object is this one here move towards point. It's got two little dots and an arrow, not like this one here. Actually, your one will look different. Your jump one will look different. It will look more like this. It will have an X going to another X. Um, but don't confuse these two if you're using Studio. Okay, so we're going to move towards. And here's where um, the power of Game Maker starts to come into play. We can directly access the X and Y position of the object my plane by referring to it here object underscore my underscore plane dot x object underscore my underscore plane dot y so instead of the x and y coordinates of this object we're now looking for the x and y coordinates of the plane and we can set it at a speed eight's pretty good click ok so now this is saying if the number of, and I can move my mouse over it to get the actual code. Uh, if number of objects, my plane is larger than zero, then we're gonna do these things. However, if it's not, else, we're just gonna set it to vertical. Oops, and I'll put that code block in. Set the vertical speed to eight going down. So this one's gonna actually move a little bit faster than the other than the other bullet. Once again, um, we will also parent this to the other bullet as well. Okay, that way we don't need to write all that other code. So we could go in and um, do object my plane, outside room, etc. cetera, um, but we don't need to. This create event will override the other create event, and so it will do this stuff instead. But um, now it will just inherit these bits here from that other bullet, and we don't need to program them again. And I'll click OK. So now it's time to create the enemy planes. Um, we can actually test this, so we can put these in these objects in the room before we before we go any further. So if I just put this object here and hit run, it should go directly down the screen. I'm not sure where my game went. So that's going straight down the screen, not a problem. And if I go in and put my other object in, so object bullet homing, I'll just click that there. It should also um, move towards my plane. There we go. And it hit the plane, made a sound. Um, we The health has gone down, but we've got no way to uh, visually show that at the moment. So I can delete those bullets from the room. I don't want them in there. Okay, so to make a plane, what we're going to do is we're actually going to make four different planes. So there's going to be three planes that fly down. Um, some are going to shoot, some aren't going to shoot, some are going to move, some are going to come from behind as well. So we need to import the sprites for those planes. So first of all, um, SPR enemy plane green. Load sprite, we'll load the green plane and center that. And then I'll repeat that. SPR enemy plane blue. Load the sprite for the blue one. Center it. SPR enemy plane uh, yellow. 
load the sprite for that one, center it, and then SPR enemy plane white, center it, load the white one, and click OK. So I've got those there. I'm going to create my first plane. Now this is also going to be the parent plane. So a lot of stuff on here, um, I'm not going to, I'm going to duplicate to the other ones as well. So this is going to be object enemy plane green. This is going to be the base one. Okay, the green one's got the least number of features, but um, it's also kind of got the basic features on it as well. So we're going to create uh, a create event here. And when it's created, this one is going to start moving downwards at speed four. Like I said, there's two ways to do that, remember? Down at speed four or vertical speed four. It's up to you. Both of those will work the same way. Then I'm going to add a step event. And the step event will happen about 30 times per second. So it's going to happen pretty fast. And we're going to do the same thing here that we did with the islands. Um, we probably could actually just inherit that from the island, but we won't. We'll rewrite this part just so that we're making sure that we understand it. And test variable. The variable we're going to test is the y of this object. It's going to have to be greater than room height. And we're going to change that to greater than. You might have larger than. Um, greater than, larger than will be fine. Okay, so if it's greater than the room height, and we'll, we'll go room height plus 40. Just give it a bit of time to disappear off the bottom of the screen before it comes back at the top. Um, if it's greater than that, then we're going to put these code blocks in and tell it what to do. The reason I'm putting these in is um, just to make it a lot more readable. Okay, when we're going down, I can say if this, okay, then it will do the stuff in here. If I don't use these code blocks, it can still work, but it can also get a bit more confusing. So I'm going to put them in and uh, I'd, I'd like you to as well. So we go move, jump to position. It's the button here. Your one might look different. It might look like an arrow, but it will say from X to X. I put that in there. And random room width, um, negative 40 or negative something. And click, okay. So that will make it so when the plane disappears off the bottom, it's gonna come back at the top. Um, collision event with the plane, uh, sorry, with the bullet. When it collides with the bullet, we're going to make it destroy itself. Play a sound first. Um, explosion one will do. And we're also going to destroy the other plane. We're going to destroy, sorry, destroy the bullet as well. And... That's odd, but anyway, we go to, let me just check in here. No, that's fine. Um, destroy the instance, destroy itself, destroy the other one, and create, create an instance here. We're gonna create an explosion at zero, zero relative. So basically the center of this sprite. Um, and we don't actually wanna destroy itself, I just remembered why. We just want to uh, make this move up to the top of the room. Okay, so we're never destroying planes because we're not creating them. They're just getting moved back up to the top. So we're gonna jump this to random room underscore width. And that will be negative 32 as well. Maybe make it a bit higher, negative 200. Um, the book says negative 400. Um, that'll make it take a long time to come back into the room. And then we're going to set the score to 10 points relative. So these green planes are worth 10 points. Now this is essentially what every plane is going to do when it collides with the bullet. With the exception of the blue plane because it flies in from the bottom. The blue plane is going to be very different. So we're going to click OK. And... What we're going to do is create now object enemy two. 
So object enemy yellow. I think we want to use the yellow one for now. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to use uh, enemy yellow plane. I'm going to parent it to the green one. Enemy plane underscore yellow. And I'm going to leave the, uh, I'm not going to put in a create event because it's going to inherit it from that. Um, I'm not going to put in a step event because it's going to inherit it from uh, that. I am going to put in a begin step event. Okay, this begin step does it just before the frame is drawn, but it's not a problem because it's pretty much the same time. It just means that I don't override the other one. So in here, I'm going to make it shoot a bullet. It's going to create an instance, um, object enemy bullet at zero, zero relative. Okay, now this here, if I, if I ran it like this, it would create like 30 bullets a second and they would be flying down. That's really, really crazy. So we're going to put in a test chance and it's going to be 30. So with a chance one out of 30, uh, shoot a bullet. That doesn't sound like a lot, one in 30 chance, but remember it's doing that every single frame. There's 30 frames a second. So every single frame, 30 times a second, there's a one in 30 chance. So odds are once per second, um, probability would say that once per second, it would shoot a bullet. It's gonna be a bit more than that sometimes, a bit less than that at other times. Okay, so that's, that's our um, bullet code for there. We will then um, click OK. That plane is done. And we're gonna create object enemy plane white. This one's gonna shoot the homing bullets. Uh, it's going to be parented to the enemy plane green. We'll have that begin step event there. And in here, we'll have, what am I looking for? Main one, create homing bullet. And uh, what are the chances? We'll make it a bit less. So zero, zero relative for that. Control, maybe one in 60 chance. Because if there's too many homing bullets, it'll get quite complicated. Um, and then that's that one done. Now the blue plane, the blue plane is gonna be a little bit different. So what we need to do with the blue plane is create object enemy plane blue. And we'll set the blue plane. So we'll create these um, create event. It's gonna be moving up at speed three. or maybe just speed two. So it's gonna be moving up at speed two. Uh, in the step event, we're gonna to check to see if it's off the top of the screen. So we go control Y uh, less than, less than zero, or less than negative 40 maybe. That way we wait till it's fully outside of the screen. So if it's less than negative 40, we're going to jump to position and you can probably figure this out. If you, I mean, I'd like you to pause here and try to figure out what I'm gonna type uh, into the X and Y coordinates. Um, based on what you know I've done before. So pause the video here, have a little bit of a think about it. Hopefully what you would have got is something like this, random room width. Okay, because the room width is still the same at the top and the bottom of the screen. But the Y, going to be room height plus something, so plus 200 or whatever. Okay, and that'll take it outside the room at the bottom. So that's what we want to do with that. And then collision with the bullet, not the enemy bullet, with the, the player's bullet that is, by the way. Uh, we want it to play a sound, create an explosion, do all the same stuff as the other one, except we want it to go to the bottom of the screen. So play a sound, explosion one, um, destroy the 
other object and create an explosion and then jump to where we said before um, I'll just go back to here might bring this down 200 is quite a lot 32 but when it gets shot it'll take a little bit longer to get back into the game um, and I'm just checking to see if that's done everything no we want to make sure that we put in that score as well so score uh, these ones can be worth 20 because they are a bit more difficult to shoot okay so there we've got our planes and what we can do is we can just put these planes into the room for now just to test that they're working so I'm going to put them and I'll just dodge them or try to put two of each in and I'll just put the blue ones down here I'm going to click the tick and it's going to say there's things outside the room should I remove them I want to say no because I want those planes to start outside of the room I hit play and now they fly down and those ones fly up those bullets are definitely shooting at me and they're scrolling around now the planes happen to be flying underneath the islands I can blow the planes up and there should be there's the other plane come back in down the bottom on the right. okay so there should always be there's two green ones there should always be two that exist at any one time because as soon as I destroy one, it just moves it back up to the top. So that's working now. And we go into the last part here, part six, mid-air collisions. Because we need to make our plane be able to collide with the enemy. So let's go back into uh, object my plane. And we had a few collision events. Collision with uh, the enemy plane green. Um, we will add we should only need to add um this one to the green and it should do it for those two because it inherits from them but we'll have to check we'll have to check that anyway if not we can just duplicate this so when this happens we're going to play a sound uh, explosion three we are going to create um instance of explosion applies to other relative so it's going to create that explosion it's going to destroy that plane destroy the other plane uh, not destroy it sorry we don't ever want to destroy those other planes we want to make that other plane jump so other and random room oops random room width negative um, negative 150 something like that not relative and click OK so that's the other one that's going to do that and we'll change our health down so we're going to move our health to negative 20 relative it's going to make it drop faster okay so normally we, when we get shot by a bullet it goes down by negative 5 we hit a plane whoops that's I hit lives not health that's health negative 20 relative and that should be those four actions there now let's just test to see if this happens with the other planes so I'll try and collide with a orange plane it does okay and a white plane it does but it shouldn't do it with the blue, with the blue planes um, because the blue planes don't inherit anything from the other two no so it doesn't do it with the blue planes so that part's working fine. Um, we do need to just duplicate that for the blue plane. So let's go back into object my plane. We'll duplicate this event, except collision with enemy plane blue. And what we're going to do is change this to random room width, and we're going to change that to room height plus 150. That's just reversing it. So before it was negative 150, now it's room height plus 150, and that will do the same thing for um, that blue plane. 
So we've actually made fairly efficient code here. If you're following along with the guide and you want to write it up four times, then that is fine as well. There's no, there's no problem doing it that way. Um, but this here is, is more efficient by using those parent objects. All right, so now what we've got is uh, the trappings of a half decent top-down shooter. Um, I will need to fix up those islands. Okay, if I get hit, the planes will go behind me. I'm pretty much invincible at the moment. Next few tutorials, we'll look at creating um, health and, or displaying that health and doing something when the health reaches zero and so on. I might speed up my planes backwards movement as well. So make sure you save that. This is what it should look like at the moment. Should have all these different things in here. Make sure, I can't stress this enough, that you're naming things appropriately. Okay, if you're just naming things willy-nilly, if you're naming things with crazy names uh, or not putting uh, prefixes at the front, so these SPR, SPR, tell me that they're sprites just by looking at them. SND tells me it's a sound. Um, when, if you continue to year 11, and we do this here, we'll be doing it in the written code portion, and just quickly to uh, demonstrate, you don't need to do this by the way, um, you'll be doing things like this. Uh, if place underscore meeting, um, obj underscore enemy plane green, self dot x, self dot y, so what this is saying, instance destroy. So what this code here is saying, if I just quickly write it out properly, is if place meeting between these two objects, so the X and Y, or if this object here is also at the X and Y of this particular object that this script is on, in this case, my plane, then destroy the instance. Now this is a bit more, this is a bit advanced and don't worry too much if you don't understand this at the moment. Um, but it's really important that you get object names written properly so that you can remember them easily so that there's consistency between them. Um, because if I just called it uh, OEPB, enemy plane blue or enemy plane green, um, it's, it's going to get very, very difficult to remember what all those things are. If you name them consistently and have a pretty consistent naming pattern, this kind of stuff gets easier. We're not doing this at year 10. So I'm going to not even save it and delete that. And delete that whole event, cut event. Okay, so that's, that's where we're at. Save that and we'll go on to the next video.